This is our second installment of the startup checklist. In the first installment, we asked questions around your suitability to be a founder, right? Like the inherent uh, qualities and skills you have. So we said, hey, listen, are you solving a problem that has personal relevance? Can you yourself build a great product? Or question three, can you recruit elite talent to join your team? Four, do you understand your ideal customer uh, profile and, and who the, your ideal customer is, who you're selling to? Um, we asked how much personal runway do you have? How much are you willing to sacrifice or set another way? Are you resilient? Um, do you have a bias towards action? And we unpacked why that's important. Uh, do you need a boss? Do you need somebody to be monitoring your work? We asked that question in the first uh, 10 questions in our checklist. Do you make excuses? Uh, uh, and do you wait for permission to do things? And uh, can you build a startup flywheel? And do you even know what one of those are? So that was our first installment. Today, we're going to cover business models for your startup. It's critically important for you to understand your business model, because what we're doing here in Silicon Valley and in the venture capital space is we're giving you milestone based funding, you hit a milestone, we give you money, you hit the next milestone, we give you more money. That's typically how this goes. And you have to build your credibility and you have to build your performance over time to get more money to fuel your vision. If you can't hit the milestones, you really are unlikely to clear market with venture capitalists. So it's one of the beautiful things. Uh, and also one of the brutal things. In fact, it's brutal. If I were to pick a word, it's beautifully brutal uh, in that you perform or you're out of the league. It's basically that simple. If you're in the NBA, there's a certain number of slots you're in competition to be on your team and to make the 15 on your individual team. If your free throw shooting sucks, if you don't work hard in practice, you're, you're just not going to get a, a seat, right? Uh, on the bench or even in the starting lineup. Same thing with startups. So let's get into it right now. First question I want to ask you. So this is our 11th overall question in the in the startup checklist. So I'll refer to it as uh, question number 11. And you can go to thisweekinstartups.com slash checklist. And you'll see this whole checklist. We're going to put it uh, into a notion page, uh, our favorite wiki, and you'll be able to go down there and see my notes. And it's live right now. You can go check it out. And uh, we're hoping that this becomes a living, breathing document. Maybe you remix it. Maybe you take some of the questions I'm asking here, link back to it, give it credit, and you know, take one of my points and and debate it. Maybe you write a full blog post out of it. Maybe you do a clubhouse or tour spaces or call in, you know, room about uh, some questions on this checklist, or you adapt it otherwise for yourself and build upon it. Um, so founders know what the important questions are to ask themselves. So question eleven: Pick a business model that easily aligns with your product or service and customers. So what do we mean by this? There are many business models uh, in the world. In venture businesses, uh, there are a few that scale and get the returns venture capitalists and their limited partners, the people who they're investing money from uh, on behalf of uh, like. And so if you look at all the great companies in Silicon Valley, in the technology space, they basically knew how they were going to make money from day one. Now, sometimes they waited till day 500 to turn on that business model, i.e. an advertising startup like Google uh, might spend a year or two just perfecting the search engine. Instagram might spend a year or two just perfecting their uh, image-based social network. And then when they hit some level of scale, they turn on advertising. And that's one of the business models, advertising. Advertising business models are great. Uh, but they are not the only one. There are subscriptions, right? You can subscribe to a product or service, be it calm.com for meditation as a consumer, or be it Slack or Notion for your enterprise. So the business model needs to match the type of product or service you're offering, and it needs to match and be effortless for your customers. Now, if you're providing a free service that people are unwilling to pay for, let's say social media is not something people are willing to pay for, um, because there's so many choices of free products out there, well, you know, uh, getting them to pay for it might be hard. Uh, previously, people thought that getting people to pay for content as consumers would be hard, because oh, Netflix is only $12. And look at how much you get from that. Why would anybody pay for a subset of that meditation or a subset of that dance videos or a subset of that exercise videos, you get the idea. Well, if they're really world class and better than what's out there, then people will pay for it. And we've seen that through a lot of the investments we've made. Fitbod uh, and Calm come to mind, Steezy and other ones. So imagine if you pick the wrong business model, right? 
uh, let's say you're Uber, and instead of charging people a percentage of the ride, you said, you know, it's $25 a month to be part of the Uber network. And uh, then uh, we take no percentage of your rides, right? The rides are just between you and the driver. It's a membership club. Well, people did try that, actually. Uh, there were people who had uh, concepts around that where people would either donate like sidecar, or maybe there would be a monthly fee to be part of this marketplace. But that would have added a ton of friction. What people wanted was just obscurify or just abstract what I'm paying to Uber for the service, and just make it easy. I don't want to pay a monthly fee. Of course, if you look at uh, a company like uh, Costco, you know, Costco exists because they have a very compelling concept, you buy in bulk. Other s services don't have buy in bulk, they sell you things as you want them, you know, you can buy one croissant or 10, but you don't not forced to buy 24 like you are at Costco. So different business models will work. Um, but you want to make sure that the business model is elegant and simple. Elegantly simple is what we're looking for here. We give you a meditation app, you pay us. We give you software, you pay us. Um, we're a marketplace. If you get a customer, we take a percentage of it. It's really simple, right? Uh, so let's look at number 12 uh, on our checklist is um, focus. You need to focus on a single business model. So ask yourself in this question, are you focused on a single business model? That would be how I would uh, frame this question. Are you focused on a single business model? Now, why is that important? Well, it's very hard to build a product and to find customers for it. And then it's hard to get them to pay, right? But then to have multiple different revenue streams when you're starting out means you're taking your team and cutting it in half. So we typically see this when somebody says, I'm going to build an advertising based business, they don't hit critical mass, then they try to turn on uh, their sales team, their sales team is selling, but the advertisers say, Oh, it's not enough, you don't have enough reach. So why would I buy an ad buy? I want to spend 25k. The most you can take from me is $2,000. I'm going to go just spend my money on Reddit, or Twitter or Facebook or Google, right? So getting bogged down in multiple revenue streams, in that example, the advertising people might say, Okay, now we're going to charge a subscription. So now you have people trying to sell a subscription while another half of the is trying to sell advertising. One side of the company is trying to restrict access to your content in order to get people to pay for it. And the other side is trying to sell. And we saw this at the New York Times, right? They were an advertising based business, they were trying to get more and more people to the site. It wasn't working, they were losing the battle at the Washington Post, the New York Times and every other newspaper to Facebook and Google, which had much wider reach and much more data on each individual user. So what did they do? Washington Post and New York Times, they didn't throw away their uh, advertising business, they still have a vibrant advertising business. But they said, you know what, the number one business is going to be subscription, let's make that the majority of revenue. And they just turned around those giant aircraft carriers. And, you know, uh, got them to face in another direction and go in a different direction, which was subscriptions really hard to do really hard to do. Listen, right now, LinkedIn is going to give you a $100 credit towards your first ad campaign. That's a hundy for you to get new customers to run some ads. Just go to linkedin.com slash checklist, linkedin.com slash checklist and get a $100 credit right now. Now, let's look at your startup. Let's pretend you're about to launch a campaign. It tested well, your entire team is happy, the creative is great, it's going according to plan, but you have this thought in the back of your head and you should have this thought for a reason. How do I ensure the people I want to target will be in the mindset to receive my message? Well, the answer is LinkedIn. Why? Because when you market on LinkedIn, your message reaches people who are ready to do business. LinkedIn equals business, business equals LinkedIn, LinkedIn business, business, LinkedIn. We all know that's the case. If you're there, you're doing business, right? And that means your advertising campaign will work as hard as it can as soon as you launch it. Because there are over 62 million business decision makers on LinkedIn right now waiting for you. That's why over 78% of B2B marketers rate LinkedIn as the most effective social media platform at helping their organization achieve specific goals. So do business where business is done and get a hundy, a hundred dollar ad credit at this very new domain name, linkedin.com slash checklist, linkedin.com slash checklist. One word, terms and conditions apply because they're giving you a hundy.